All right, here we go. My reaction and play along to the first Star Wars match of the uh, of the year. Laura Kelly versus Molly Damon. I'm kind of rooting. I'm rooting for swag. So that means I should root for Laura. But I kind of like Molly and the Den too. Swag and the Den are probably my. Some of my two top favorite. Uh, factions. It's not some promo. Here we go, Winston. Let's see what he's got to say. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna run around and desert you. Laura Kelly, what's up, girl? Hey, okay, I'm excited. Match about to go down. My Jedi robes are coming. I can't wait. We're gonna do some crazy force tricks. Swag got your back, girl. Let's go and win this number one contender match. I cannot Save wait. Save it, Winston. Save it. I have made it clear to you up to this point <laughs> what I want to do. Uh -huh. This is gonna be about me. It's not gonna be about you. It's not gonna be about swag. It's not even gonna be about Molly. This is about me and my road to revenge against Alex Damon. I'm going to take Molly down and I'm going to get that championship. But I am not going to stop trying to get home to corruption. So I need you to be at the match and do what you need to do, but stay out of my way. Okay. Ooh. Uh, she still wants to go with corruption, no. huh? That's not the first time I've dealt with somebody with a negative Nancy attitude. Uh, that's okay. I'll deal with that one in the next match. Lord Kelly wants to go back home to corruption. Or if there'll be a big trade later on. I doubt it. She's too valuable to trade off. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. It is the movie trivia showdown, season eight. War has begun, and there's no one I'd rather go to war with than my good buddy. Baby Carrots himself, Mark Ellis. What's up, my man? Welcome back to the Schmodown. There's so much going on here. and What a way to open up. Because if you look at just, just alone in the off-season of what happened, the free agency special, uh, I mean, that alone, how people were, were joining into factions and what was happening in the off-season of phone calls being made. And, and then you see Dan Merle and Ben Bateman joined together drew mcweeney comes back liz shannon miller and ethan irwin joined together all these at jte returns all this drama was happening there don't even let's not even for, don't forget about the fact that we had this massive draft where we invited all of these new people all the people from all over the world i mean hell we have people from australia uh canada there are people for that were uh, that had applied from scotland so many different people had come in and now we have a i should have been one of those on people roster eight factions 12 people all fighting for that faction championship kicking us off here, right, here is going to be a star wars match for the ages molly damon lights out laura kelly one of them is going to have a fruitful match that will likely leave them in the position to herd nurse the other one well they might want to check their r2 unit for a bad motivator well, look, it also continues on the narrative of the dungeon versus swag because both Chandru is repping swag and Mara is repping, repping the dungeon. Molly Damon, not on the suspects this, this year. She got drafted by the dungeon. And Laura Kelly, she's not happy about where she is. She wanted to be, as we saw before, she wanted to be with corruption. She felt at home with corruption. But Winston said, I don't care where you feel comfortable with. I'm taking you because I believe in you as a competitor. I believe you can help swag, and I believe you're going to get those four points because that number one contender match today is worth four, and the championship match is worth seven with the new point system. And, Laura, there's some story behind it. It is a number one contender match. The winner gets a shot at the title, and you want to see how it all went down. Here you go. Star Wars. 
episode, whatever, Revenge of the Dungeon. I like that. Trip. Molly, Laura, what you all did in this tournament was exceptional. Next season, you two will play each other in a number one contender match. Any of you looking to poach my two ladies, Marisol and Laura, I swear to God, I will make next season a living hell for you. Think I'm bluffing, try me. I wrote a whole promo that I was pretty proud of for this match, taunting Molly. Given how things played out in the draft, none of you will ever get to hear it. You really gonna take on Laura Kelly? You think she'll play for you? What about Ace? Hmm, there's a couple things. First of all, looks like Ace is still on swag, so boo you there. Uh, second of all, Laura Kelly is a beast. She is knocked down, drag out, earning her nickname, lights out, because I don't even know if she's missed a question yet in this match. She scares the hell out of me, but it fits. Watching the way that she communicates with Shannon, she might have gone to the dark side, but she's powerful. With Laura Kelly on swag, Noah, I wonder what her level of determination is. You know, there was all this talk in the off season about Laura Kelly. Is she gonna play for corruption? Is she gonna play hopscotch with Winston? Is she gonna play for the Mets? None of that matters to me. You know what matters? The magic, Molly, Damon. Someone was smart enough to know what a true Maverick can do for this league. She knows this game, man. Yeah. She really does. I really think Molly Damon wants to prove that she is a force. No pun intended. Laura and I have been circling each other ever since Star Wars Celebration. This is a long time coming. I was a different player back then than I am now. I want and the swag to win. Is gone. The Maverick Faction is wise. Gone. Oh, Molly cool, to win, Molly. player wise. That's adorable. Uh, I think Laura I will win, statistic wise. I didn't reinvent myself. But I'm still season, rooting for Molly. Just so I can be placed on a different faction this season. I didn't put on pants and stick fake eyelashes on my face during a pandemic for swag. You know, she kind of hates me. It's not important, all right? Because what's going to happen is Laura's going to come in here. She's going to win. Swag's going to start off the year with the lead. This time, y'all put some respect on my name. After Molly takes out Laura, we get one step closer to taking out the less talented Damon and bringing a Star Wars championship into the dungeon. I have one goal, and that's to take the belt from Alex. And in order to do that, I have to defeat Laura Kelly. So Laura, it's lights out for you. I'm not gonna lose on purpose just to spite Winston. What's the saying? All's fair in love and war. So what does it mean when you take away the love? The only drip drip you're gonna Behold. hear is yeah. the tears on the floor. Yes, like please. That? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Was, uh, pretty unbelievable. great, Christian. It's uh, it's just something I threw together in iMovie. I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. It's Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia. Trivia down. Introducing first. Representing the dungeon. Damon, 
has arrived. Gone is the magic. However, she is here determined as always. Molly, was I correct in my assessment that you have been more motivated now? I said today on Stereo that I, when I first, after your first match, when you played in Celebration, it was kind of like, no, I'm, I'm okay with this. And then something happened. You caught the bug and now it seems like you're more determined than most competitors out there. Is that accurate? That is absolutely accurate. I mean, I, I've been having to see that Star Wars belt in Alex's office since he won it, and I want it in this office. It's going to be a lot of office work for these two I, coming up this season, Christian. Uh, Molly, when you look, obviously, to the future, you eventually want that belt, and you're certainly worthy to have it, but Lights Out Laura Kelly is pretty much right there as well. What do you make of your opponent today? How do you size her up going into this epic match? You know, it, it doesn't scare me. Uh, I totally understand where she's coming from, uh, wanting to get back to corruption. But, you know, I, I think I still want it just a, just a little bit more than Laura. All right, well, Molly Damon has arrived. Molly, good luck to you. You are in the number one contender match, and we will see you in a moment. And her opponent, representing Swag, with a record of two wins, three defeats. She is the 2020 Star Wars Tournament semi-finalist. Seem, well, you seem happy now, but you didn't seem happy a little earlier. What's uh, what's going on? Well, to be honest, purple's not really my color, so I thought I'd just kind of stick with what I know. Fair enough. Okay. Um. So here's my question for you, Laura, because it seems like you really wanted to be on corruption, and your <laughs> shirt indicates as much. But if you're not going to rely on Winston much for managing why would you need to decide which faction you're on? Aren't you just an independent free spirit and able to compete regardless of who your manager is? Sure, I kind of like that. Independent free spirit, no manager, no faction, no nothing. It's just me out here. I'll take that. Works for me. All right, before, before we get the match started here, Laura, I will say, you know, I know how badly you want that championship. So, and I know that whether it's corruption, whether it's swag, wherever it is, it's about that mm -hmm. title. So is there a bit of satisfaction knowing that in order to get to that championship match, you have to take Molly Damon out? Sure. Uh, this is kind of exciting because we did play each other at our very, at least my first match ever. I think yep. it was her first one too. Uh, and I think I took her out of the running for that match. So kind of excited to, you know, sit back and probably take this one fairly easily too. Laura and Molly have arrived, Mark, and we are about to start our match. How does it go? Ooh, shots fired. Shots fired. Oh, I do the rules this year? Okay. The rules of round number one are as follows. It is a Star Wars match, meaning you hear 10, yes, 10 questions in round number one. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. You can't see, but I just winked three times. I'll remind each competitor, you have about 15 seconds to get that answer. We're going to ask you to show what you wrote to the camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into said microphone. You each have three usages of the JT. We're still calling it the J the JTE rule. If you need to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer, you just want to buy more time to flaunt and make some drama, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three-round match. You may issue the challenge, 
I guess, especially in Laura's case, we will bring in your manager, regardless if you want them there or not, and then they will confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place. Christian hadn't done that in a month and a half, and I just, I gotta tell you, I feel like I'm born again. So, Mark, I'm ready to go. Laura, are you ready? Let's do it. Molly, are you ready? I'm ready. And let's get ready to Schmodown! Round number one, question number one. In the realm of Revenge of the Sith, in Revenge of the Sith, which character says the line, another happy landing? <laughs> Pretty much you and me, every time we finish one of these matches. Wow, look at this monster. You know what, just stuck in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Four, four, three, three. Two. Unbelievable. Uh, Pens down, let's see those answers. <laughs> just eat your pizza. Uh, let's sorry. go to law first. <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi. That yes. is correct. And Molly? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Christian, you're off this match. One to one. You know, this is what happens. I have a feeling I'm asking the next question, and here it is. It's in the world of The Force Awakens, Episode 7, and here it is. What is the name of the junk trader on Jakku that Ray frequently does business with? What do you got there? Some pizza? Some lasagna? Pizza. They brought some Good. pizza. Good. It's a very safe to eat food on camera. Good yeah. luck. Someone said a bit and car and plot. And it is five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, and Molly. Uncar Plutt. Yes, Laura. Uncar Plutt. There we go. So far, two, two, as we get to our next question. Here it is. In The Empire Strikes Back, in which year was The Empire Strikes Back originally released? Very nice of your daughter to uh, swing by with some food. I know she's delivering whiskey to Jim Bavida in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Did you, the best part was she went, hello. 19 and 8. And 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pens down, Laura Kelly. 1980. Yes, Molly. 1980. 3, 3. Next question mark. I feel like this is going to be the... This is going to be this game. Here we go. Uh, 1980, good year. A lot of really sexy babies born that year. The next question is in the world of The Phantom Menace. And it is in The Phantom Menace. What does Anakin say he had a dream that he became that allowed him to free the slaves on Tatooine? Damn. It's, in, it's the first match of the season, and it's already intense. It means start to lot. feel that tingle again five four three the jedi two one pens down hands up please and molly the jedi knight yes and laura jedi yes okay here we go uh and next question rogue one rogue one which admiral leads the space assault on imperial forces during the battle of scarif Hmm. Is that the same admiral who was on Hoth as a Radis. senator and then flew to Tatooine with his daughters on vacation? Maybe. Had a different... uh, just a reminder to the chat not to post any answers. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Laura. Admiral Raddus. Yes, Molly. Nope. I said Gorin. <laughs> Gorin. Wow. So not rick raddis but raddis <laughs> hits and laura strikes first blood all right next question all right christian we are going to start the world of star wars and it's going to be return of the jedi the greatest star wars film of all time bar none and your question Ooh. the great pit of carcoon which contained a creature known as the sarlacc is located where on the planet of tatooine get out your get out your maps this is a Cross topography the question I'll tell you that I think Ken Napsok has tears in his eyes that someone missed the, the Radis. Five, four, three, two, Across one. the Dune Sea. Pens down, please, and Molly. The Dune Sea? Yes, Laura. It's a desert, but it's a Dune Sea. Unbelievable so far. <laughs> Six, five, Laura Kelly has not missed thus far, and we get to the seventh question only with a one-point lead, though. Here we go. Next question. The Rise of Skywalker. How often does the Aki Aki Festival of the Ancestors occur? 
All right, and this is where Christian and I start to tread water furiously. <laughs> no chance. I got no spit. Every 42 and years. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, Laura, what do you got? Once every 42 years. Unbelievable. Molly? Every 42 years. Yes, uh, that is something else, Mark. Something else. All right, next question is in Attack of the Clones. And that question from episode two, what is the name of the handmaiden who is also Padme's decoy, who is killed in an explosion at the beginning of Attack of the Clones? When they announced that title, Four it was gonna be called Attack of the Clones. What was your initial reaction, Christian George? I gotta be honest with you, I'm just staring at this pizza. Just eat it. I can't do that. Five, four. We all know you're doing three, it. Three, two, I'm staring at it, one. Hands down, please. Molly. Corday. Yes, Laura. Corday. All right, here we go. Two questions left in this round. Laura Kelly has not missed yet. Molly only down by one. And category nine, The Last Jedi. What does Yoda tell Luke is the greatest teacher? Hmm, probably say uh, Mrs. Barrick was my favorite. You think that would be the answer? Failure. Or it could be. Was, yeah, she, she taught me French in high school. Oh, that's fair. Five, four, retain nothing. Three, two, one. Hands down, Laura. Failure. Molly's beating herself yes, up. Molly. Failure. Okay, so Mark, we are at our last question in round number one. Where we stand right now is that Laura so far has a perfect round. Should she hit this one, then she and only she will get a bonus question. Here we go. And that is in the category of, anybody want to guess? Episode four, A New Hope. And it is, Uncle Owen says that Luke better have the units in what area in the farm repaired or there will be hell to pay. Ooh. It's a tougher question to get through without chuckling than some might expect. It's really tough so far and both competitors showing up. Just shows one little thing, five, four. Repeat. Okay, South first Ridge. One for Molly. All right, and that is in the world of A New Hope, episode four. Uncle Owen says that Luke better have the units in what area in the farm repaired or there will be hell to pay. God sakes, there's mushrooms on this one and pepperoni and everything. Is there hell in Star Wars? Well, I mean, they mention it quite often in a lot of Do they have the Bible out there? Might, they might. Five, space Bible. Four, three, <laughs> two, one. Hands down, please. And Molly. The southern area? That is incorrect. And Laura? The south ridge. Correct. Laura Kelly with a perfect round. So, Laura, you're going to get a bonus question. You don't have to write it down. You just have to answer it. You get 15 seconds. Are you ready? I'm ready. What rank does Boss Nass give Jar Jar for bringing the Gungans and the Naboo together in the Phantom Menace? We need the full rank. Bombad General. General. For one more point, Bombad Laura General. Kelly goes up by that. three. 11 to 8. What a round for Laura Kelly. Really, really solid. And Molly, eight points. Still solid round as we get to round number two, Mark. We're going to drop out Kaiser. And all right, The Force Awakens. All right, Molly, you're going to get five questions in the realm of The Force Awakens. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. What is the name of the planet? The resistance base was located. Dakar. Two points. All right. I would have got that. What is Poe's call sign during the Battle of Star Killer Base? Black Leader. Yeah, Two Black more Leader. points. All right. Han Solo and Chewbacca were hauling what creature on their freighter when they came across Ray and Finn in the Millennium Falcon? Wrath Tars. Tars. Two more points for Molly. She's answering too fast for me. And here is the fourth question. What now is the name of Han Solo and Chewbacca's scavenging ship that Ray, Finn, and BB-8 are tractor beamed onto? The Nirvana. The Aravana. Two more points for Ooh. Molly Damon. <laughs> That's doing Nirvana. really well Aravana. in this category. I got that one wrong. here I is I the final that question. Kylo Ren's First Order Star Destroyer goes by which name? The Finalizer. Finalizer. Two more points. Molly Damon really doing well there as we see ourselves now 
in an 18-11 game as Molly picks up a uh, big point, seven point lead over Laura. All right, so we're, we're going to get to attack of the. I'm going to try to do better answering these before the she mark. can, if she don't. That's right. That is episode like two. Keeping did. score at home. And attack of the clones, it is. Remember, two points per question, unless you need multiple choice. And your first question is, Laura, who ruffles Anakin's feathers by saying, "Oh, Anakin's not a Jedi yet." Padme. Padme Amidala. That is her name, and that is correct for two points. We move yeah. on. Yep. Sticking with Attack of the Clones, your next question in the film, Attack of the Clones, what title does the leader of Kamino have? Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Yes, he does. We move on. Question three. In Attack of the Clones, who absorbs Count Dooku's force lightning with his lightsaber? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thankless yeah. task there, but it is mm. worth two more points, and she's creeping closer and closer to Damon's lead as we move to your penultimate question. In round number two, Anakin tells Padme that, that Obi-Wan believes that. that he is not ready for the Jedi trials because he is too what? Unpredictable. Damn right he isn't. <laughs> yep. Boy. Some foresight there. Okay, Christian, for a perfect round. Five numbered question for two points. While at the lake country on Naboo, Padme recounts a story of a friend from her youth by the name of Paolo. Padme went on to become a politician while Paolo went on to become Became an artist. A what? An artist. They have those there. Yeah, that's right, for two points. That is impressive from both competitors. 21-18, uh, Laura Kelly with a perfect game thus far. Molly Damon having a great second round. Still down by three as we get into the third and final round. Mark, how did... Okay, so we now start with Molly Damon. Molly, you chose category number seven. Category number seven. All right. So, Mark, category number seven, that would be in the category of The Force Awakens. Force Awakens. Okay. Good movie. All right. What rank does Leia hold with the Resistance as we learn from the film's General. opening crawl? General. General. Correct for two points. Molly now sees herself 2120, has to hit this three in order to bounce it to Laura. All right, Molly. You chose category one. Category one. That would be in the realm of the Jedi Order. The Jedi Order. All right. How many students did Luke Skywalker claim to have with him at the Jedi Temple, not including Ben, that was eventually destroyed by Kylo Ren? Ooh, good question. Twelve. Correct. For three points. All right, so now that. Molly takes the lead once again. It is now 23-21, Mark, as now Laura Kelly will go here with category number three. That's right, Laura Kelly. Three years before all those sexy babies in 1980, there was a movie in 1977 called Star Wars, Change to Star Wars A New Hope. That is what your two-point category is in. And to tie the match, your question is, why did the Empire fire on the escape pod housing C-3PO and R2-D2 at the beginning of A New Hope? It because they didn't read any life, life forms. forms. A bad air in judgment for them, but two points for Laura, and we are tied at the top, Christian. We are tied, and we are going to stay with Laura Kelly uh, with Category 5, Mark, who, we, if she hits this, it bounces back to Molly. That's right. Category number 5, shockingly, is not a Star Wars movie. It's who said it, so it's Star Wars quotes. And your three-point question for a three-point lead. Laura, in what Star Wars film will you hear the line, do you have any idea what it's like to live with a price on your head? Solo, a Star Empire Wars story. Strikes back. It's a good Star Wars story, too. Yeah, that is correct for three points. And Christian, Laura Ooh. Kelly back on top again by three. Laura Kelly takes the lead and now sees herself with a 26 23 think lead they said as that Molly, you have to hit your five point in order to bounce oh. it back to Laura. If you hit it, that's what happens. If you miss it, Laura Rebecca Kelly will it, take sir. the victory and the four points for swag. Are you ready? Give it to me. 
All right, here we go. So, category eight, heroes, heroes. In The Rise of Skywalker, Kanan says two things to Rey through the Force. Her name and what other line. Ooh, Kanan. Rise. Five. I'm guessing. Four. Rise. Three. Second one. In the Rise of Skywalker, Kanan says two things to Rey through the Force. Her name and what other line? Rise. Rise. Yeah, it's Rise. Pretty sure. Rise. Four. Let it lift Three. you up. And your winner, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Laura Lights Out Kelly. Laura Lights Out Kelly wins, and the answer was in the heart of a Jedi lies their strength. Laura Kelly seemed to know that one as well. Laura Kelly does it, and the like first that, victory okay. goes to Swag. I got four black points. Two. Let's go. Four Good points. Drink. Welcome, girls. Yeah. Hey. I see it. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go buy some food milk. I'm gonna go buy some food milk. Yeah. Well. Look, look, we're going to bring you guys back so a little bit because Jen Sturge is going to be talking round. to both of you, but congratulations to both eight Laura points and, in both and Winston sets. out. Mark, that was, uh, round. that was an impressive display by Laura Kelly because Molly Damon played In the third great. round. Molly Damon played great. I only got two. She just missed so one I got or two. I mean, that, that wins you a, what, the way that she played, that wins you a match, mostly. Laura Molly Kelly got eight. didn't sweat. Laura Kelly looked I'm telling you, that anger. Well, I got 22. That, so that, was, that, was, that was a performance. That was it's a To quote an Oscar winning film, Cool as Ice Laura Kelly, because you are right, Molly Damon to call. And what it also means is that swag strikes. Swag gets on the board they first. Are up four points with that win. Four points. It's a number one contender match, so it's worth four points. And Ooh. that is crazy right now because swag is jumping right into it because they have an opportunity now to go up a potential. They can go up eight points. All right, there we go. That was pretty good match. Pretty good match. I only got 21 points, Ugh. but technically I only missed what four, five questions, I guess. But I would have got two of them, but I was rushed. And that would put me tied with or tied with Laura or tied with Molly, but. I still missed both the three-point questions and Molly's five, so. Uh, hopefully I'll do better next time. Until next time, see you again. It's been fun. Red out.